Alright, hi everybody. So today what we're going to talk about is um, the polarity of molecules. So I have on the screen here um, what I've done so far and how it relates to Lewis structures. So you have Lewis structures in the center of the diagram and then we've spoken about resonance, we've spoken about formal charges, we've spoken about shapes or geometries, and we've talked about, spoken about bond angles. What I wanted to add to this diagram today was the molecular polarity. Now this is a pretty difficult topic because it's very conceptual and it's very visual. If you can see things visually it might help um, rather than you know like um, thinking about it just based on words. Looking at the images I provide should help you a lot. I may pause the video, go grab some of those um, go grab some of those models so you can see that too. All right, so let's get into molecular polarity. So the first thing that you have to understand is what the word polar means. And we're going to first talk about polar bonds, so what a polar bond is. And when we talk about polarity, we talk about something having two poles, like a magnet. A magnet has two poles. It has a positive pole and a negative pole. Well, the same thing with molecules or with bonds. If you have a polar bond, it results from the unequal sharing of electrons in a bond. So it's unequal sharing of electrons in a bond. Now to be clear here, I'm just talking about the bond. So if I were to draw you a whole molecule here, if I were to show you an entire molecule like, um, like CO2, all that I'm talking to you about now is what I'm going to highlight, the one bond here. And I, they're the same, so I could talk about either of those bonds. This is a polar bond that has resulted from the unequal sharing of electrons in the bond. It's based on the idea that the electronegativity of the two elements are different enough that they do not share the electrons equally. And I say that here, you know, if you have two elements, and I give the example of HF, if we look up their electronegativities, you'll see F is much more electronegative than H is. Because of that, the F is going to attract those electrons much, much closer to its end than the H can. We see the same thing here with CO2. I drew this over here. If we complete this example and I look at the electronegativities, O has an electronegativity of about 3.5, and C has an electronegativity of about 2.5. That means that the O is pulling on those electrons a lot more than the C. That results in this situation where the O is negative. But look at how I illustrate this. I show a negative sign, but then I show this symbol delta. That means partial. So that O is partially negative. The C as a result, because it's getting the electrons pulled from it, that C is going to be partially positive. And so I have this situation where I have this unevenness. A one atom is pulling on electrons more than the other. When we see the HF example, the F is pulling on the electrons more than the H, so the F is partially negative. The H is partially positive. If I show that, I have my H and I have my F. My H is a positive and my F is a negative delta. They call this a dipole. Di is two, so two poles. They call this idea of this unequal sharing a dipole moment. Just like a Kodak moment, but for molecules. Dipole moment, you have this unequal sharing. So when they say, oh yeah, water's a dipole, or you know, HF's a dipole, they're talking about the fact that there's this unequal sharing, there's this polarity. The opposite, where they share equally, so if you share electrons equally, then you are called nonpolar. And that would be for things like if you had, you know, um, Br and Br. 
Well, both of them have the same electronegativity. Both of those nuclei are attracting those electrons in the bottom the same amount. So neither one is pulling on the electrons more than the other. That results in this equal sharing. Here's a quick um, electronegativity chart. You can see that the most electronegative elements are over here, you know, in the upper right-hand corner like we saw in other periodic tables. Now, what does this look like? Well, you know, if I want to visualize a dipole moment in terms of, you know, the, the difference in, you know, the pole here, I have a situation on the left where I have two Fs. So here's one nucleus and here's the other nucleus. Both of them are the same atom, just like I saw with Br2. So they're not going to have any difference in electronegativity. This is going to be nonpolar. Now they do HF. So now the H is over here, and the F is over here, and the H is pulling less. So the H is going to be partially positive, and the F is going to be partially negative. And they show that in red. The red color over here represents negative. The blue color represents positive. Now what if I go extreme here, if I go LIF? If I go LIF, the LI is over here, the F is over here. At this point, we are ionic. We have such a big difference, there's such a disparity between the charges that this is positive, this is negative, end of story. Whereas with HF, they're still sharing. So this would be polar. So we have nonpolar, we have polar, we have ionic. We have these three different um, types of you know, molecules and ionic compound here based on how they're sharing. Notice something, they're all just two atoms. When I look at bond polarity, I look at you know, what are the two elements involved. If I have more than two elements, things get complicated. You have something called a molecular polarity, which we'll get to in a few minutes. Now, you know, these are guidelines down here at the bottom. So, you know, here's some guidelines for, well, what should the differences be in between electronegativity? Well, generally, if the difference between two elements' electronegativity is between 0 and 0 0.5, the bond is considered nonpolar. Just for your information, the regions considers only when it's zero difference that it's nonpolar. Anything else, anything above that, up to pretty much 1.7 to 2, um, it's polar covalent. But, you know, as we get more advanced here and we look at stuff from an honors point of view, 0 to 0 0.5 is nonpolar, 0 0.5 to 1.7 is polar. If the difference in electronegativity is even greater than 1.7, although there's some exceptions, you're considered ionic. So, you know, this is just showing you what a series of halogen, uh, hydrogen halides look like. HF, HCl, HBr, HI. And, you know, although the general shape is pretty much the same, because, you know, I has a lot of electrons around it, you can tell by the color how they differ. And this one over here, you know, we have a positive and a negative. Over here we have a positive and a negative. Over here we have less positive and less negative. And over here we have less positive and less negative. So we go from over here very polar. If you do the difference in electronegativity for HF, it's over the 1.7. You know, it's about 1.8, but it's still polar. When we look at this one here, it's about 1.0. Um, 1 this one here is about 0.8, and this one here is about 0.6. And so the difference there is, you know, like you're getting smaller and smaller. This is the electronegativity differences. So the sharing becomes a lot more equal over here with HI than it did over there with HF. Now what happens when I have a more complicated molecule? Well, look, so far all that we've done is we've looked for molecules that only have two atoms. And here's how we tell that. If we have a molecule that has two atoms, so Br2, HBr, um, you know, what else do we got? I'm looking at the periodic table. Um, you know, NO, CO. The rule is, if the bond's polar, then the molecule's polar. If the bond's not polar, the molecule's not polar. Because the bond is the molecule. You know, that's, there's only one bonding pair there that's set up. 
And so that bonding between those two atoms, it's either going to make the molecule polar or not polar. But what happens when I have something that's central? I have a central atom. Like if I have something like, you know, I, ha I drew CO2 before. Now I gotta look at the symmetry or charge distribution. So if I look at the symmetry and charge distribution around this, my O is partially negative, my O is partially negative, and my C is partially positive. What's essentially happening here because of the linear shape, you have the O pulling electrons this way, and you have this O pulling electrons this way. As a result, the dipoles, the bonds that are polar, will cancel, and you will end up being a nonpolar molecule. And the way I remember this is SNAP, symmetrical nonpolar, SN, and then asymmetrical polar, SNAP. Now, I show this one down here, CO2, and I show you what this looks like over here, and you can see there's symmetry to this. Now what happens if I have something like water down here? Well, water has a lone pair on the central atom. If there's a lone pair on the central atom, it guarantees that the molecule is going to be polar. So when I look at this, if I look at H2O here, let's see why. These lone pairs push the hydrogens downward. It causes there to be a bent shape there. So there's this bent shape there, and the O's are pulling, or the O is pulling on the electrons more than the H. What ends up happening is you get this negative part right up here, and you have this positive part down here, and there's nothing to balance it. This is an asymmetrical molecule. So where CO2 was symmetrical and nonpolar, Water having those lone pairs on the central atom causes the molecule to be bent. That causes an asymmetry in charge to result. That asymmetry in charge causes the, um, the molecule to be not asymmetrical, cause there to be a polarity. So here are some examples. We have a binary molecule with a polar bond, it's polar. We have a tetrahedral molecule here HCl, which has a 3.2 compared to chlorine's 2.5 uh, electronegativity, HCl is pulling on the electrons more. They're canceling. Here I have an NH3 with a lone pair on the central atom. The N is more electronegative, causes the shape to be pyramidal, and now the Ns are pulling on the electrons more. Here we have something that's tetrahedral. This tetrahedral one, though, has a 1Cl that messes up the symmetry. And here we have something where we have BF3 with three Fs all pulling in opposite directions. Now, um, I am going to stop here. My next video, what I'm gonna talk to, talk to you about is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna um, go back through this with a fresh sort of perspective and we're gonna tie in the chart and then we're gonna do hybridization. All right, thanks so much for watching.